make fire, you get smoke. Let me show you how to get rid of this smoke. Get a jar in this unused part of the periodic table, roll it up, tape it. Put a little toothpick through it, then light that on fire. Let it burn for a little bit so we can get a little smoke from that. And once you got a nice little burn going on, go ahead and set it in that jar. Watch the smoke just trickle out of the bottom. That's a cool experiment in and of itself. Once it's got really smoky, go ahead and knock it down in the jar and cover it so all the smoke collects inside. Add some rubbing alcohol, and then shake that baby up really good. All the fumes and smoke will mix in there. And then, if you got a match, use that. I didn't, so I just used my candle. Boom, smoke's gone. Why does that happen? This is sodium. It's really reactive. Let's cut off a piece. Now we want to do this somewhat rapidly. Let's cut this guy in half. This is sodium hydroxide. There's sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide's a base. Okay, I put a few drops in. This one is hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric in. Phenylphthalein here. It just tells us about acids and bases. Okay, what do we see going on there? Nothing. Now let's put it in the base. So let's go like this. Now. Here we go. We'll put them in. You ready? I'm excited. Maybe just get, let's take like a step back. It's okay. It's on the side. It's melting into the side. What's the difference in lighting a balloon filled with air and a balloon filled with hydrogen? If we put some water in a flask, add some sodium hydroxide, the solution gets really warm as the sodium hydroxide gets surrounded by the water and makes these cool hydration shells. Now if we add aluminum and then cover it with a balloon, let's see what happens. What we'll start to see happen is that the aluminum has a thin layer of aluminum oxide that forms on the outer crust and that sodium hydroxide base is going to punch holes in that so that the water in the solution can react with the aluminum and release bubbles. So our balloons getting filled with hydrogens that came from our initial water and the sodium hydroxide. The reaction itself is actually really exothermic, so this starts to get really, really hot the longer it progresses. Now let's light our balloon filled with hydrogen on fire. So does that mean we could run cars on aluminum? Let me know in the comments. Get a dish, fill it with water. Get a little beaker, fill with water, set in the tray. Get a watch glass. Two ways of doing this now. I'll show you both. I've always used 91% isopropyl alcohol. I'm also gonna try iron wool. A fellow science lover requested that. Alcohol in the watch glass. Light the alcohol. The fire warms the air, produces carbon dioxide gas and hot H2O steam. Get a big beaker, cover your fire. <laughs> Why does that happen? Let's try it with steel wool. I've literally never tried this. Air is coming out. A small amount rose. Look at all that unreacted steel wool. Why didn't it all react? You can boil water with ice. Live dangerously and heat the water in the microwave. Cover it with a metal lid, seal it, let it stop boiling, put ice on the lid, and it strangely starts boiling. Here's the logic in two phases. First, let's put room temp water in a syringe, increase the air volume, and decrease the pressure. Pressure's the key. And water boils. Do you know what's happening to the water's temp? Phase two, let's boil water in a glass. This is really hot. Steam replaces air in the glass, flip it into cool water, bam, steam condenses and pressure drops, just like our jar. Ice on a metal lid condensed the hot steam, pressure dropped, Water boiled. Do you get it? This is the Chia Pet you always wanted. Put a little sand on your aluminum man's head. Grab some baking soda, aka sodium bicarbonate. Grab some table sugar, sucrose. One part baking soda to four parts sugar. I add a little extra baking soda to this run. Mix them thoroughly, add lighter fluid to the sand. This is a lie. Try rubbing alcohol instead. Dump on the baking soda sugar mix and light. Once it lights and heats up, I like to add just a bit more mix. What's happening? It looks like fungus polyps that smell like roasted marshmallows. 
but polyps start to coalesce into a hairdo that would make Medusa envious. Chemically, the sugar is burning in two ways. By combustion, the sugar reacts with the oxygen to give off carbon dioxide and water. It also breaks down into pure carbon and water. This happens in part because the baking soda is breaking down into a solid sodium carbonate as well as water and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide makes the sugar not get enough oxygen to fully combust. So we got this sugar becoming puffed up carbon with sodium carbonate mixed in. The final product is actually quite fluffy and has slightly more structural integrity than freshly fallen snow. This is potassium permanganate right here. Boom! Potassium permanganate. Now, potassium permanganate really likes to take people's electrons, just like the oxygen. This right here is liquid glycerin. It has some high energy electrons to be taken. Normally, if we light something on fire, what do you have to do to light that on fire? Give it heat. You need some heat source. Let's see if it lights. Get our potassium permanganate. Let's make a nice big pile here. Has this been heated? No. no, it's not heated right now. This is just nice, cold, room temperature, potassium permanganate. Our glycerin, is this heated? No. I'm gonna put it in this little beaker right there. We'll put a nice little glob. You ready? Yeah. Yes. Cold and cold. Oh, didn't work. Nothing happened. That's too bad. Um, maybe we need to blow on it. Oh, what? Oh, all right. Oh. oh. I'm gonna take these four little balloons and combine it with a whoosh bottle to make a whoosh balloon vacuum. If I can get it to work, I'll try this huge one. I'll use 91% isopropyl alcohol to ensure strong whoosh. Coat the walls with alcohol to maximize the vapor. Minimize the friction by dipping in water. And light. Definitely don't do this at home. Attempt number one. Worked! Surprisingly, the high pressure rapidly switches to low pressure and the balloon gets pushed right in by the atmosphere. Think this big one can octopus its way in? I got a few doubts. I gave it a little love and... <laughs> Check out this related whoosh bottle video. This aluminum ring's almost magic. All we need's a balloon. Rub the balloon on your shirt, pant, or your lab coat, and then bring it near the ring. Wow! <laughs> It shoots off of the balloon like it's got a little jet engine on it. I had to use my little stuffed animal here. It's a gopher. And now it's repelling. And it shot off that time. Oh, wow. Watch what happens if we can get it to touch the pole. How cool is that? It shoots right back. Every time we rub the balloon, it grabs electrons from a surface. The ring has electrons that are freely able to move, so they move to the other side of the ring and leave the protons. This allows the ring to get attracted to the balloon until it grabs extra electrons from the balloon and becomes negative. Then it's two negatives that repel, and if the ring hits the bar, then it gives away electrons, sometimes even extra electrons, becoming positive and comes right back to the balloon. What happens to the temperature of water when you add table salt? This is room temperature table salt. This is room temperature water. Got my thermometer. My beaker's now half full of water. In the temperature, 17 degrees, add salt. Stir gently, or you could use a stirring rod if your students keep breaking your thermometers. Check out the temperature. No way. Unbelievable. When I heard about this, I had to try it and see if it worked. The temperature went down. Ah! That's because the crystal lattice of the sodium chloride? Here's how to pop leaves. It's sort of like a firework. Or juice box. Or even a bag. Grab a leaf. Here's a tomato. Here's a sweet potato. Here's an orange. Bell pepper. Here's what you do. Make a circle with your thumb and forefinger, using the others as support. Set on the leaf, and try both sides. See which works better. Smack the leaf, the air pressure builds up, popping the leaf, and sometimes blowing out the back. Let me know how it works for you. What I have here is an old 1991 penny, presumably made of copper, and a piece of copper. Let's put them to the flame test and see who's really copper. Here's copper. Copper melts at just under 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, 1,984. And now the penny. We see the copper penny immediately start to deform because it's not actually copper. It's copper plated zinc and zinc melts at 787 Fahrenheit. That's over a thousand degrees cooler than actual copper. See the copper skin with the zinc drop? 
see if it drops. It's also hot. <laughs> Here's the zinc interior of the penny. Watch how quickly it melts when there's no copper cover. Ooh, look at that pretty zinc flame. 10,000 hours of practice for one experiment. Training, finding the perfect proportions, materials analysis, meticulous precision for one moment. What's that? Oh, I'm just showing if you grab this ring, the pen falls in. Explain why.